resident advisor actually have detailed there's some news about what was it called some news about events and nightlife stuff which i thought was of interest here so resident advisor doing a good job of kind of doing these coronavirus updates in terms of what's happening and how it's going to affect um the dance music industry and they put some news here just i've seen today where it sort of essentially gives us a bit of a timeline a bit of a roadmap as to when we can expect to go back to raving in our favorite places because i'm sure a few of you are itching and ready to go back and dance within a you know a dingy lit a dimly lit warehouse somewhere um, with massive stack speakers blaring into your eardrums so this is an update from the 15th uh, for your resident advisor and it says um, earlier today, German Chancellor Angela Merkel extended a ban on all major events, concerts, festivals and football matches until August 31st. The country's federal system means um, each state will decide its own restrictions, including the size of the event. It's unclear whether this will affect the nightclubs. So we've got some sort of idea when the end point is going to be, right? But the issue we have here is that it's August 31st that they're deciding is when they're going to extend it until right the lockdown. Right, the ban on all basically lockdown or the ban on all big events. So they'll we'll still have I think what will happen is that we'll have the lockdown will still continue until then. We might see people be phased back into work, right? People maybe kids will go back into school in different in different phases from like secondary probably from like primary to secondary to college kids and stuff. Then we might see different areas of industry go back into work. And then from there, we'll still see a lot of social distancing. I still think supermarkets and shops and shit will still have people queuing out, you know, two meters apart to make sure no one's um, within range of the virus if you're asymptomatic. And then I would assume once that is done, um, insurance companies will be willing to, you know, um, provide insurance for these events once there's some kind of idea of a vaccine maybe there's some stipulation from the state or the government that you can do events but i think until then you won't see events i think again until the next until next year until basically the summer of next year when the vaccine is available because i think most scientists that you 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 hear or you hear speaking say that usually vaccines take about a year to develop right um so once that happens i think insurance companies will be more willing to sort of um make sure they can cover events because no one wants to be viable now if they put an event on unless again i think if you if you know if you're all right going to like warehouse parties and stuff you'll be fine i don't think there'll be an issue you'll still find those kind of underground events where you sort of have to text a number or be a part of a facebook group be on an instagram page i think that'd be cool but if you want to go to an actual ticket event that you might see on ra i think you definitely should be thinking about that until next year unless you go to something in like you know central europe or eastern europe where they don't give a fucking fucking it like as soon as they get the green light they're going so if you booked one of those i think um london warehouse events has a festival in albania i think coming up in september or something i think that'll be fine maybe the that thing in vietnam was it called i forgot what that place is called the festival everyone goes to in vietnam that might be all right that's in december um, they might be okay and it's up to you if you want to go or not so i think a lot of the bigger ones might not again thinking about it too a lot of the bigger places might not take that chance because they're having to shell out a lot more money to set up the entire event hire security get a bar in book the people it's a lot to do so i assume if you're willing to go to the underground stuff that'll be on but again i wouldn't get your hopes up for anything happening in june or july across europe i would say for the most part if if Germany saying the very first and they've been pretty good in terms of stemming the tide and flattening the curve then I can only assume we're going to see it, especially in the UK or especially other places in Europe we're definitely going to see that um, restrictions lifted I would say by the end of the year and then large scale events hopefully by next year but then that also will give the option for football games and stuff to be played behind closed doors because they won't need to have people in the stadium but at nightclub events i think next year so that's the probably the sad news regarding that but hey what can you do we move on and then we say do, 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 do. what we want to talk about here ba, 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 ba. Oh, I thought this was interesting. So, <coughs> Joe Rogan mentioned in his podcast, I think, earlier on with Tim Dillon, that he thinks he's going to change the way that he does his touring, which I think, you know, a lot of people are going to do. They're going to make these changes once they realize, you know, life isn't going to go back to normal 
once the restriction gets lifted and he's decided that he's probably going to do a few appearances and play a few regular spots so usually they have a regular spot at the comedy store the love factory or the ice house in la where they sort of always perform and then he might do this thing where he does residencies every summer in las vegas or somewhere big right a big place where you kind of book it out for six weeks um back-to-back dates and you have people kind of fly from all over the world to come and see you in one place um and i think that might be something to that might be that might essentially help the low the middle to lower tier people within different industries whether it's djs whether it's singers whether it's you know performers of any kind i think might be helped that fact that a lot of the higher you know the people at the top of their industry will probably look at it and think you know what i probably want to spend more time with my family off the back of this issue i don't want to be flying around the world 360 times i don't know 20 250 times in, in, in the year i want to be there for my family and my friends i want to make sure i see my kids grow up all that sort of nice smooth mushy stuff but like i said i think it might present an opportunity for the people in the mid to lower level to have the opportunity to play more often and get seen more often in their major markets or in their local areas because you don't have the um you don't have the weight or the you know you don't have the weight of the bigger acts coming in and sort of booking out dates and not taking dates away from you but not allowing you to play on the dates that you're playing because you know who wants to imagine Dave Chappelle comes and tours in your town the last thing you want to do is put on an event the same week you know, or the same day because no one's going to come to your thing unless you obviously don't mind being a bit scrappy and sort of like you know putting your wits against up, up against his marketing team but for the most part you want to give yourself the best possible chance to concede and the best way to do that is to make sure he's not within your purview so maybe that presents a good option and i was thinking for electronic music that could be also pretty cool where we might see uh a lot more bigger maybe the mid to the upper level djs um reducing their fees somewhat so they can play more often in the locations that are nearer to their home especially if they live in because most of the big guys they live in you know major cities right paris amsterdam berlin london i don't know whatever right um, there's not a lot of them that live in like rando places or if they do they can still commute quite easy to these like these hotspot locations so they might play regularly in certain clubs and then um uh just smash out all the big festivals in the summer that pay them the most amount of money anyway right because at the moment a lot of these guys are flying to all the big clubs they're doing all the little clubs and they're doing all the big festivals which is you know pretty it's a pretty uh, brutal schedule or workload in it it's a lot to do um but it probably they're probably best served trying to do less charge a bit more and then they're able to stay at home longer but i don't know if it depends if they want to stay home some of them probably don't probably some probably want to go and tour so they can avoid their families i don't know but i thought that was a pretty cool um idea from joe in that respect i would like to see that because again i think it would change the way uh bookers in clubs and bars book people I'm a bit, like I said, I've been a really big proponent in terms of pushing the idea that we need more bars and clubs in the UK to um, adopt the residency program or idea, right? Where essentially you have the same five to ten people playing every weekend in your bar and club and then maybe on special occasions or maybe sometimes even special occasions you keep them there and let them play you might kind of sprinkle in the old superstar dj here and there but you don't rely on the superstar dj to kind of make sure that you guys are paying rent or you're able to pay your staff you rely on that through the people that are in your local community and if, why that helps is that obviously number one from a you know from a greedy point of view as a bar manager you can currently get away with paying those guys and girls less um they'll be grateful for you for the opportunity they'll be more willing to invite and bring their friends they're gonna push and promote that thing you know until the cows go home because it's le- legit it's a legitimate chance and opportunity for them imagine if e1 had a group of like 10 to 15 people that they play that play regularly there apart from the big nights they put on right or in the other room they've got residents that play all the time in in x or y or upstairs the residents playing there and then they have the bigger person playing downstairs imagine how stoked that person will be the fact that they're sharing the same room or the same airspace as the bigger dude and being able to kind of you know um uncompromisingly play their kind of style of music with in front of a captive audience instead of playing it in some random pub somewhere no one cares where you're at i think that'd be awesome um it will change maybe the attitudes that clubbers have when they go out right they won't be that entitled or whatever maybe um they'll be more open to letting people discover their sounds and shit they'll recommend their friends i think there's a lot of scope for it 
going forward and again it'll put the it'll put the promoters and put the event uh, managers in these bars and clubs in the corner and make them choose the local talent because there's no other option right especially with you know uh, Brexit of course happening and promoters are going to have to work they're going to have to pay a fee for the person to come in and you know st- what, I've, I've got the clearance they got to pay a particular fee to get someone in from an EU country to come into the UK to play so all these are, all these things economically are going to eat into their profits or their ability to break even and you know from the time that I've been promoting I know from my experience you don't really want to make money because you know you won't you just want to break, break even and make sure that you put in a good party for your friends in it you want to have a, you want to have a good memory you want to when you reconnect with your boy um on the, the, the following weekend you want to be able to share some fun moments in it so if you're able to do that people that you know and love in your local community that's probably the best way to go about it i think but what do i know let's move on um no more groupies oh and i think this might actually lead i think i saw this video of uh, luciano and uh, carl craig playing at i'm not even sure what event this is uh, this is a uh, cadenza uh, pool party i'm just looking at it thinking this could probably be the end of this sort of kind of thing in it of seeing people play at a festival with this amount of groupies behind them in the stage and you know it's a quintessential sort of like you know mediterranean party where you have tours of scantily clad women behind the dj booth loads of groupies loads of just you know hangers on trying to um uh, i don't know be front and center of these performances it's always weird i always thought right like this idea that you kind of want to dance behind the dj and make it well known that you're part of the crew you start looking at the people in the crowd and pointing and putting your hands in the air as if like you're doing something it's just a bizarre way to do things i never really did that kind of guy but it's so bad in the video that Carl Craig can't even move right he can't exactly he can't do his job properly because there's so many people on the stage but they like that I think Luciano now has changed I think I remember hearing of him, watching a video of him talking in an interview for I think an IMS uh, IB for something and he was uh, he seemed a little bit more clear minded he's think he's sober now he goes to therapy and you know whatever it may be but Jesus Christ man <laughs> What, what, what does that look like with social distancing? What does that look like? Do you have to have them spaced out? Is just is it just go for bid? Just the people performing on the stage that are going to be up on there? I don't know. to see the lack of smartphones i think you know that era was maybe digital cameras it looks like everyone's got like a cyber shot looks like from the likes of it yeah cyber shot there cyber shot here so you know those are those are dedicated cameras that will maybe what 300 pounds plus which is probably a lot out of people's price range and you have to really give a shit about photography to get one of those so you did see a complete lack of uh, smartphones in this crowd which is quite um refreshing but yeah, I wonder what that's going to look like nowadays, right? Are we going to see that many people be in a booth? Will they want to be there? Will they be comfortable having them there? Will we see like a... Or will, or will performances be like an actual performance that you go to like in a festival where a band plays, right? They're, and then when they finish, they pack up and then someone else comes and plays after. But there's no like just loitering. They have a band just hang around behind them whilst they have, you know the cooks aren't just going to be standing behind the strokes as they're playing right they, they go home or they go to the green room and the other one comes and then they kind of rotate that could be pretty cool I, I wouldn't be against seeing that to be honest 